So Joe, how, how hard is your job this week when you have to evaluate Stanford not only just on the very few number of games they played last year, but the big turnovers they did have on offense? And not only that, but evaluating ourselves. You know, we're going to have a lot of new faces out there, and I, I, I'm not sure how those guys are going to respond in game time. I think I have an idea, but uh, that remains to be seen. But yeah, they're, you know, the thing about Stanford is really calculated in their approach, and they haven't deviated a lot from what they've done going back to 20. 16, you know, I mean, they, they are what they are. They're going to play a physical brand of ball, a lot of different personnel groups. And um, from a personnel standpoint, yeah, I don't know what they're going to throw out there, but I know they're going to be uh, tough, uh, intelligent kids that are that are going to be assigned to sharp and disciplined. And so we're definitely going to have our hands full. Any similarities between the offense K-State runs and what Stanford does, or is it just more philosophical? Uh, very similar in, in the approach, a little bit uh, different in the presentation. Mm -hmm. um, Multiple personnel groups, uh, uh, run orientated. You know, we do probably a little bit more trade shift and motion than they do. Uh, they're more uh, into checking plays, so they want to see your your picture, so they can get into different things. Whereas our offense is going to try to confuse you, maybe a little bit more with the pictures. But uh, yeah, it's it's been good practice for about uh, nine months here. How much do you anticipate the new faces in the secondary? Having to just go through some growing pains communication-wise when the bullets start flying. Well, I hope not. I hope we've got through as much of that as we can. I, you know, I'm sure there's going to be some adversity. And, you know, what what I'm excited about is how mature we've become and how we'll handle that adversity as opposed to, you know, a year ago where maybe that, that would have would have crushed us, you know. And, and so we're, uh, you know, we're older. Um, guys have, you know, even though they're – wearing a new uniform. There's some guys that have been in the fire before. You know, you look at Russ Yeast, you look at Sincere Mason, Reggie Stubblefield, uh, Julius Brents, all guys that have played in, in games at other institutions, and uh, they're just going to be doing it now for the Cats. Echo Bordeaux he kind of told us he was kind of expecting the ball thrown his way a little bit more this year just because of Julius Brents' presence on the other side. Is that something you kind of anticipate? Um, potentially. You know, I mean, Julius is a, is, is a dude. You know, I, I but the uh, – um, the fact of the matter is nobody knows anything about him other than the people in this building. You know, I mean, he, he doesn't have a great body of work right now. That's something that's going to be uh, continuing to culminate over the next few weeks. So um, I hope that Echo gets a ton of balls thrown at him because he's playing at a high level right now. The uh, extra linebacker that's listed on the depth chart this week, is that just for the Stanford game and we'd see more of a nickelback look and others? Yeah, you're going to see a lot of different personnel groups from Stanford and, and we'll probably match those personnel groups uh, to a degree. Um, so, uh, but, you know, philosophically, we went through spring ball without uh, without a nickel and uh, uh, we were able to, to do some things. And so we're, we're going to uh, experiment with that a little bit more. It's not going to be an exclusive thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll see some three linebacker things out there at times. Are you able to get a little more advanced with your guys now? We're getting there. Um, you know, uh, we're getting there. You know, I, it, it, it's still a work in progress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're still, even through last week, we were still shuffling guys around positionally. And it's tough to continue to, it's tough to graduate until you really are settled into a position. You know, maybe it's a, a free safety moving to strong or a strong safety moving to nickel or whatever the, the case may be. Um, they're little moves, but until you see repeated pictures, you're not quite comfortable with what you're doing. And, and when you're not quite comfortable with what you're doing, I don't feel comfortable pushing the envelope. But I'm, I'm hoping in the next couple months we're able to do that. As a coordinator, do you find yourself wrestling with keeping it simple so they can play fast and also being creative to confuse the offense? Daily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> daily. And, uh, you know, it, and, and I think that's why we, we've got such a great staff that um, – you know, I was always on the on the other end of that thing, pulling pulling me. You know, I, I seem to be. There's days I want to push ahead and go through some of the growing pains, um, and they kind of saddle me back. And then there's other days where I'd I'd like to saddle back, and I said, "Nah, let's let's go ahead." And we we never seem to be on the same page with that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's that's just a constant uh, evaluation that I that I have to make, and we try to. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, I think whether it's Stanford or whoever we play, if we can get 11 sets of cleats in the ground and we can get our eyes right, I think we'll have success. Sir, for tailback Jones, have you seen any similarities between him and a Big 12 tailback? Oh boy, that's a, you know, there's been a lot of great tailbacks. I mean, he's, he's a physical, uh, hard-nosed runner, difficult to bring down strong, um, disciplined. You know, he's not a guy that's going to make undisciplined runs. He's not a guy that's going to have poor ball security. Um, he's very good in pass protection. Um, you know, very good as a route runner. I mean, he's, you know, I played, I don't know how many games there, dozens. 
So uh, we're going to have our hands full with him. Much of a difference between the two quarterbacks that you might see? I don't think so. I mean, I, I do think there, there are slight differences between, you know, one may be slightly a better thrower, the other might be slightly more athletic, but they're cut from the same cloth. Uh, they're both guys that are, uh, to have success at Stanford, I believe you have to really have a great mastery of the system, and, and I feel like that they're similar in that regard. We're not dealing with opposite extremes with those two guys. The qualities of maybe Austin Moore, why he's probably going to see the field on Saturday? Yeah, he'll see the field on Saturday. Um, he's just steady Eddie. I mean, he's just, uh, um, you know, he's going to be he's not going to wow you with any one thing in particular, but he's just going to steadily be correct, and he's going to be physical. He's going to be hard-nosed. He's going to play his, his tail off, and um, that's why he's earned where he is on the depth chart right now. Your mind, what do you think Timmy Horn will make a good captain? He's probably one of the more vocal guys we have. Um, you know, just yesterday he, after practice, he grabbed everybody and said, hey, listen, I'm going to watch film tonight at 8. Anybody wants to come and join me? You know, uh, things like that, that just we haven't we haven't had uh, since we've been here. Guys that just are, are that outward with it. You know, he, he's taken full advantage of his of his situation. You know, he came here, uh, you know, obviously wanted to, to play in, in the Big 12, but he, he's also wanted to probably reinvent himself a little bit, and he has not wasted a minute of doing that. What's the comfort level you've seen of your linebacker tandem? Uh, oh, I, I feel very good. I feel very good. They feel very good working together. Um, you know, Deuce is playing at, at a, Deuce Green is playing at as high of a level as I've seen since I've been here, just fast and uh, seeing things really well. Cody Fletcher is, uh, you know, again, another steady Eddie character that's just uh, has the ability to make plays. He's doing so much better in his pass rush things. He's doing so much better in his coverage. Uh, you know, those are some of the things that, that uh, he's worked on in the offseason. I feel really rock solid with those two guys out there. When you got um, Ryan and Wayne listed at the same spot at linebacker and they've never actually played it before in a game, does it give you nerves as a coach going into it? No. I mean, I don't think there's a team on the earth that's taken more snaps in spring ball and fall camp than us. Uh, just the style of practice that, that, we, uh, that we implement and uh, they've they've be definitely been forged by fire, and 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 they've been great in practice. Um, you know, again, I, I don't know how they're going to respond in games when things are uh, a little bit different, at least, especially early. But uh, you know, they're quality kids. They're 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 intelligent football players. Wayne's been in the fire before, albeit seeing it from a different angle. So, uh, and Ryan has too. Ryan's played uh, a decent amount last year. So we'll see. Uh, time will tell. Anything else? You have to adjust it all being so far away from the field there in Arlington? Well, uh, going to make a little switch probably this year, uh, and I'll probably be on the field now. Um, something that we uh, talked about as a Coach Kleiman and myself, and just a number of factors, I guess. But, uh, you know, want to have a, a closer connection with the, the players on game day. Want to be able to communicate with those guys a little bit more directly. Maybe have my hands on the pulse a little bit more. And uh, I've done that in the past and, and felt comfortable. The last shoot, six years or so, I've been in the box. And so it's, it'll be a change for me. But I felt like as a play caller in the box, I got maybe too analytical. You know, I'm on my charts and I'm on my, you know, stuff. And I got maybe away from my gut a little bit more than, than I would like to. You know, and hopefully being down there in the heat, you know, uh, seeing a corner that's tired or, you know what I mean? Just uh, being able to be... Uh, Getting sweaty, you know, I think uh, will help me as a play caller too. Does that send somebody from your defensive staff upstairs? Coach Standard will be upstairs, uh, the linebacker coach. So, uh, got great eye. He's been up there years and years. So he'll be. Uh, that's that's where he'll be. Okay, thanks. thanks. Coach. All right.